Hello and welcome. My name is Dennis Murphy, and I'm your moderator for today's intelligence briefing, where Guy Eastman will present a first look at the U.S. Department of Defense FY19 budget, which was released on Monday. The 2018 James Intelligence Briefing Program consists of approximately 40 events and is available to all customers of Jane's Intelligence Center and Modular Products, including Markets Forecast Products. Our briefer, Guy Eastman, has been with Jane since 2011 and serves as a senior analyst for the Jane's Defense Budgets team. Guy's deep experience in the DOD budget process is informed by a 20-year career as a Naval officer with tours of duty in the Pentagon as a Palm Coordinator and Branch Head as well as post military experience as a strategic planner for the defense industry at the Lockheed Martin Corporation. Thank you, Dennis, and welcome to our webinar customers. Uh, thanks for joining today uh, for our first look at the uh, uh, DOD budget. And uh, so I have a lot of material, so we'll uh, jump right into it and uh, we'll go through an hour and uh, get to your que uh, questions at the end. Purpose, uh, I like to use a purpose slide, so uh, certainly we're, we're taking a very first look since it was uh, just uh, released on Monday. Uh, you, you see some of the events that have transpired be, uh, previously. So essentially, we still are under the Budget Control Act uh, of uh, 2011. That's still the law. Uh, back in December, on the 12th of December, uh, the uh, President signed the National Defense Authorization Act, which is only half of the process. We still don't have the, the full up uh, Appropriations uh, Act. Uh, you can see that on the 9th of February, the, uh, there was a bipartisan agreement between the, uh, in the Congress uh, such that uh, they agreed on the top numbers. We'll talk about that in a minute. And then finally, uh, on Monday, the President released uh, his entire President's budget uh, request. The operative uh, word there is request, okay, since it has to go through the Congress. Notice there were only three days between the 9th and 12th uh, of those two events. So in summary, I'll, I'll get to this at the end, but basically there's a $74 billion increase uh, over the CR levels in 18, uh, and about 10% real growth uh, going to the, the readiness and, and uh, care of our troops. So uh, basically the agenda today will be to run through uh, the environment, talk about some of the top line numbers, uh, show some budget displays uh, which will decompose uh, the dollars into various uh, views, go through uh, the, the service modules, uh, talk about growth and, and issues uh, and summary at the end. Uh, the environment, okay, so uh, GDP about 20.8 trillion, national debt about 20.7 trillion, they're having a race. Uh, the debt ceiling is suspended until March of next year, uh, which gives us more time to plan uh, and uh, borrow more money. Uh, the budget that was uh, put out on Monday is at $4.407 trillion in outlays. And if you take the uh, $686.1 billion, which is the 051 account, uh, that's about 15.6% of the of the outlay for the year. If you go to the 05 uh, O level, it's uh, 716 billion dollars. So the bipartisan agreement uh, recently came up with uh, increased caps to, this, to the discretionary budget, an increase of 80 billion in uh, fiscal year 18. Cap is now 629.1, and an increase uh, of 85 billion in uh, fiscal year 19, and the cap is now 647. So that's a total of $165 billion, which is quite, a, quite an increase. However, the discretionary budgets are being squeezed. I'll talk about that later. And the interest on the debt is uh, you know, going to eventually eat us alive. Uh, it's, it's at about 7% now. It's going to 11% in uh, 10 years, possibly uh, 21% uh, by, uh, by 2047 at the 30-year point. Um, as I said, the BCA is still the law. Uh, we've lost some buy, um, buying power over the uh, the years, about $600 billion. And as we all know, the first of October is uh, is not too far away, and uh, and that's when it all came. Uh, just a few words on the uh, the hierarchy of documentation. In the upper left, you see some of the things uh, in the NSS. So we're, we're putting America first. Uh, some of the core pillars in that, uh, in that document were protecting American people, the homeland, way of life. Uh, prosperity, the, you know, the economy is very important for all of us. Uh, peace through strength, uh, going back to the Re uh, President Reagan years. And lastly, our influence across the globe. On the upper right, you have the defense strategy. Uh, the three core tenets there are, are more, more lethal force, lethality. Uh, we can't do it all by ourselves, so uh, alliances and partners are very important. Uh, and then, of course, uh, we need uh, affordability and greater performance on, and, and the trust of the American people 
on on the budget and spending every dollar. And of course, there's a great power competition, uh, which is the thrust of the NDS. Lower left, uh, nuclear posture review, basically uh, looking at the uh, nuclear warheads and uh, our capabilities there. Uh, we're looking at nuclear armed sea launch cruise missiles, uh, getting tomahawks uh, back into the submarines and even a low-yield submarine uh, SLBM. So those are some of the things that came out, although a lot of it's classified. We don't, we don't know what that says. On the lower right, we have a four-structure review. Basically, this speaks to adding um, uh, soldiers, sailors, Marines, uh, airmen, et cetera, across the force and looking at platforms, et cetera. So the, the end strength is going back up, so it's uh, 25,900 uh, in addition to uh, the past couple of years. So looking at the top line numbers, we're, we're going to take some look at some numbers here, and you can see that uh, the yellow stripe, the vertical stripe, is the uh, year under concern for the Congress, fiscal year 19. So you can see that it's been increasing over time. If you add the base budget of 617.1 and add the overseas contingency operations value of 69 billion, which actually came down from 89 billion, so 20, uh, 20 billion is being moved from OCO back into the base. Uh, but you get the discretionary number of $686.1 billion in ship, and then the Navy wants to shift to the future uh, frigate FFGX, guided missile frigate, uh, and you can see 1122 going out, and that's a 20-ship program of record. Um, let's see, anything else here? Um, 54 ships in the plan. And the Navy has published its 30-year plan to Congress, so that's online. I printed it out, but I haven't had a chance to go through it, although it does have nice graphics this year, which is really good. And now we go to the aircraft procurement plan. This is the Navy and the Marine Corps uh, for uh, APN. And, and this is a shared account. Both the Navy and the Marine Corps buy their aircraft through APN. You can see in the yellow stripe uh, 120 aircraft uh, being requested in fiscal year 19. And uh, that's split between the, uh, the black uh, items are the Navy and the red items are the Marine Corps, okay, in the left-hand list. So you can see as it goes down, the Stovall for the Marine Corps 20 um, 20 aircraft there, 24 Super Hornets. Uh, the Navy is going to buy uh, the, uh, the carrier variant, nine of those. And it can continues to go down. You can see the, the helicopters from Marine Corps 25. That will be the final buy there uh, for that uh, program record of 290, well, let's see, 342, I'm sorry. And uh, Poseidon's and Hercules, it says, so you can see the whole list. Uh, so 120 aircraft, which is a, quite a big uh, uh, rise over last year's 91. And then 655 in the in the five-year FIDIP. So you can see the changes in the program record on the right-hand side. So 19.1 billion dollars for the APN account, 26.5 uh, increase over over uh, over 18, which is huge. Uh, and then of course the Stovall has now gone up to 353 aircraft, uh, which is a, a rise of 13 over the last couple of years. More attention, the infrastructure there for these buildings, et cetera, uh, has been uh, has been uh, hasn't been funded very well over over the last few decades, so they're trying to get the infrastructure back up to speed. And lastly, we already talked about the munitions and buying preferred munitions at the maximum uh, capable pr production rates uh, before, and all the services are doing that. So, so those those as I see it are kind of growth areas. Uh, I didn't hit all of the growth areas, but uh, this is a good bit of them. So, are there any issues uh, going ahead? Well, yes, there are. And in fact, this chart hasn't changed all that much from last time. But in any case, uh, as I mentioned in the beginning, uh, we have a huge national debt. The discretionary resource basically is that the PBR is a request. It's going to the Congress. Um, it will be reviewed until the 1st of October. Will we get another CR on the 1st of October? Probably will, unfortunately. Okay. Uh, I talked about the discretionary caps being raised by 80 plus 85 billion. Total of 165 billion over two years for uh, DoD, and then when you add non-defense, it's the total of 296. So that's going to add to uh, to the uh, debt and the interest on the debt and the deficit as well. So we're going to take the long view in, in the national defense strategy, the long view against near peer competitors, Russia and China. Uh, we're going to stay in the current fight against uh, terrorism, and obviously the 19. And of course, it's a transitional budget to next year's budget uh, in fiscal year 20. So with that, I'm going to uh, do one more chart, and that is we, IHS Change, will be doing a lot of uh, analysis going forward. Uh, this just came out on Monday. This is the first look. Uh, we have rapid reaction, uh, reaction reports being posted uh, as I speak, seven of those, mainly platform 
uh, et cetera, and some weapons. In a month, we'll do more response reports. They'll be posted. Thank you very much for your attention today. This concludes the webinar. Thanks for joining us. A short questionnaire will pop up on your screen uh, when the session ends. Uh, please uh, give us any feedback so that we can continue to meet your needs as far as these webinars go. We do about 40 every year. Joining us for the first look, uh, stay tuned for in a month for the uh, in-depth on the 15th of March, and uh, enjoy the rest of your day, and uh, good luck. Mm -hmm.